Yeah, um, um, I'm happy to, and I'll, I'll, I'll try not to, to go too long at the beginning and um, would fully expect there to be uh, quite a few questions on this and we'll do my best to answer them honestly and as, as transparently as, as possible. Um, I suppose it makes sense to start on the, the focus on the Snell trade first to, to go through all of that. And um, with respect to the trade, uh, the Alvarado trade that we made today um, can can address anything on that after. I think, Dave, if that works for you, I think that probably makes the most sense. So um, I think first would would like to just take a minute to, to thank Blake for, for all he's done uh, while representing the Rays, especially these last three years. Um, he's, he's really grown up in this organization. And uh, I have very vivid memories of Paul Kirsch telling us about how good he was going to be. Um, you know, Paul's our area scout in the Northwest, longtime area scout in the Northwest, and how, how good he was going to be back in high school. And, and, and sure enough, here we are. And um, he's just, the, the progress he's made since then has been remarkable. Uh, and, and through it all, and as he's continued to grow and develop on, on the field, he's, uh, as, as you all know, I think in, in so many respects, he's, He's always been the same old Blake and has been true to himself throughout and um, certainly think, think the world of him, have a great relationship with him and, and wish him nothing but the, the best is, as he goes forward. Um, I think zooming, zooming out a little bit or just kind of getting into you know, our, our highest level goals uh, on the field, um, look, I, our, our goal is to win a World Series and want to make that, that very – very clear. Our, our goal is to win, um, and it's at the end of the day to win a World Series. And uh, it's it's our philosophy. It's it's our belief that uh, the best way for us to achieve that goal is to construct playoff caliber teams year in year out for for every team that that we put out there to to have a shot and and to avoid the the valleys to to not take any years off. And uh, given the the totality of our circumstances and certainly I think revenue in particular um, and not not an excuse we, we have what we need to, to win and I think we've shown that but it does require a challenging balance act between the team that's immediately in front of us uh, and and those that we envision the next the next several years um, we've we've had a lot of success in in the Rays era and, and certainly these last three years and based on the, the overall talent that's currently on our major league club, uh, as well as the amount of talent that we have throughout our system, uh, we, we believe really strongly that we're well positioned to, to be competitive and to sustain, sustain this level of competitiveness that we had here for, for the foreseeable future. And that we have players on hand that are prepared to step up and assume greater roles as we, as we go along. So um, that's not to say that anything about 2021 isn't important to us. Uh, being really good in 2021 is is really important to us, especially given what our players just accomplished. Um, but at least as important is that we're really good for a long time. And, and like I said, without without interruption, and um, because ultimately at the end of the day, um, being really good, being really talented year in year out, and with the level of talent, young talent that we've we've assembled here. We believe that's what gives us the best chance to win a World Series. We need to have as many shots as as possible. Um, and you know, this is this is a trade that obviously does take a little away from not a little, it takes a meaningful piece away from our 21 club. But uh, the return itself, the proximity of two of the four players in the steal, gives us a lot of confidence, along with the talent we have in house and the amount of time we have left this winter. That. We're going to be really good this year. Um, we feel confident about our club and their ability to defend uh, what they accomplished last year as the AL champs. And uh, this is a deal that's going to further strengthen us for the next several years as well. So uh, with that, happy to, to open it up to any questions uh, that, that you may have. And like I said, I'll, I'll do my best to happy to answer all of them um, and, and do my best to provide you all the, the most honest uh, answer that, that I can here. Hey, Eric, uh, just to clarify one thing is so acknowledging that you said Blake takes trading Blake takes away from the team, but you you don't see this as a step back for 21 at all. Oh, no, I, I mean, I, I'm not going to pretend otherwise on that. I think trading Blake takes takes something away from from this team. I, I, I don't think it 
would be fair to, to suggest anything otherwise. Um, you know, I, I do want to point out that uh, baseball, as much as any sport, is it, it, it takes, you know, it, it takes a lot of players to have success. And as, as good as, as Blake has been, we've, we've had a pretty good record in, in games that he hasn't started over the last few years. And uh, don't, I don't want to get that confused with, we don't need Blake. He, we're, we're not as good a team without, without Blake. Um, there's, there's no way around that, but um, I'm saying that because we do have a lot of confidence in this group in its entirety. And, um, you know, saying it that, here, you know, it's late December right now. We do have some time left to continue to work at this club, um, and and if there are opportunities to to further strengthen it, we're gonna we're gonna explore them. And then just to follow up, just kind of the balance. If you could speak to the balance between the financial flexibility you gain in a deal like this and the players that you get back, and w which is maybe the better or more important uh, part of that. Maybe that's a short and long term thing. Yeah, um, it it probably is. Like it, it, it again. The, the economics have to be a consideration, you know, our, um, our, you know, our, our revenues and, and what we bring in, it is what it is. This, this year was a challenging year for, for everyone. Um, I'm going to keep that in the right perspective. There, there are a lot of people out there that have had, had it a lot more difficult than any of us have. This is, this is just a game, but um, the, the, this was, this was done not because we were looking to, to move Blake, this was um, done in a large part um, because of the the talent that that we're getting back. Um, that was that was the big driver for us here. And you know, to 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 get a four player return where we have a couple of players, Luis Patina, that we we think the world of and think is very close, um, and that excites us. Um, Francisco Mejia, you know, the, the catching position is something we're looking to further strengthen and. Um, think that he's he's prime for you know at his age and what he has underneath him for a change of scenery and um have a lot of confidence with working to do there those are guys that can come in and and contribute and it's not so far off and then cole wilcox blake hunt two players we think really highly of that we're optimistic will be part of winning teams you know years from now but not but not immediate but you know this is a deal where we were able to bring back some really high-end talent in our mind that that can come in from behind and uh pick up some space and that are going to be on an upward trajectory that that will help us and will grow into bigger roles over the next few years. So the, the talent was the, the primary driver here. And um, like I said, uh, had us in a position where we're willing to, to, in this deal in isolation, take something off of our club um, to do something that we felt would give us a greater chance to have this sustained competitiveness for the years ahead. Hey, Eric, just, just kind of to go along with that. Mm -hmm. with, with three years left in Blake's contract, then you kind of feel this was the part where you can get the most back and just kind of over the next couple of years or why was this the kind of the time where you, you guys decided to trade Blake? Yeah, I, I think it, we didn't actively pursue this. I, I think it's fair to say that we, we listened, you know, and um, there were, you know, we weren't, we, we, if we were going to consider it, it was going to be for players that we had a lot of familiarity with in 2020 that we got to see in 2020. Um, you know, each of these players we had a chance to see and evaluate in different settings in 2020. That was that was really important. I, you know, I, I don't necessarily know that we, we were going to need more this year than we would have a year from now, almost certainly, just because of the amount of time that um, that Blake has left, you know, on his on his contract. But, um, you know, I we went into it with an idea of there was going to be a, you know, a strong price that we were going to set and if anyone was going to engage and, and push us on it that we were going to going to have to. team on, on the roster now where do you guys kind of go with with starting pitching you've, you've lost more than and out and out Blake there with just those six spots yeah yeah so uh, um it, I mean look we, we we talked about it prior to this deal that that length um that starters that that bulk options were going to be really important to us and that we need to, you know, to thicken that group. That's, that's only more the case now. And that, that talking point only strengthens, you know, that need only strengthens. So um, we've, we've got a lot of work to do, you know, in, in saying that um, we also have a lot of confidence in the young pitching that we have that hasn't yet established themselves. And, you know, glass, I, I don't think you're going to find better fans of bigger fans of yards than, than we are anywhere. Um, and, and you look at what Fleming did last year and, 
um, believe that's something that, that he can build upon. And, you know, Patino, McClanahan, um, Honeywell, you know, Joe Ryan, and on, you know, the, these guys, you know, the, we've got a pretty good group that's coming here, you know, and, and excite us. But if we can, if we can bridge that a little bit, and I think it's fair to say that 2021 will be some sort of transition year for our staff, you know, in the depth and where it is and some of the injuries, but, you know, McKay's going to be back in short order. Um, but yeah, we, we, we'd like to, you know, we're, we're going to be out there looking to see if we can find someone that, that has a little more underneath them uh, that, that can help us in 2021. Eric, because you guys got so close last year, what have the conversations been with other players who are currently in the group and may have been disappointed in the trade? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I talked to, I've talked to a handful of players already, and I think it's important in these situations to explain the thought process, to explain the excitement that we have for some of the players that our current players are going to have an opportunity to play with um, those that are further away or less relevant to them, but you, you just have to own it. You have to, you know, you, you have to explain it. I, I think you, you owe them honesty in these situations. And that's that we have an awful lot of confidence um, in the group that we have. These guys have won a lot of games, <laughs> you know, the last, the last few years with Blake on the mound and with other pitchers on the mound. And, um, I think just the way things gone, you, you know, you, you have a lot of players on our team that at one point might've been like a Luis Patino, you know, at one point might've been a Francisco Mejia where the stars kind of dimmed a little bit, but it, you know, it was in that point of his career where a new setting might, might take off. You, you have a lot of players that we have here that were, you know, in, in some respects can, can relate to some of the players that, that we have coming in or, or part of deals that, um, you know, that, that had delayed gratification, you know, and, and that's what, what this deal is certainly setting up to, to be if we, if we get it right. So um, I think, yeah, I, I, there's some disappointment there because Blake's grown up with a lot of this group and, and they know how good he's been and how important he's been to this club. But I do think that there is some level of trust and confidence that, that they have and, um, and how we operate this thing and how we put it together. But you know, I probably also don't get the most transparent answer from them as well, but we do care. None of that's lost on us. And, um, you know, the, like I, if, if I'm so fortunate, I'll be able to do this job, you know, for, for a long time. It doesn't require much physical demand to, to sit in a chair at a desk. Um, these guys don't have that kind of opportunity to play this game, you know, and um, part of why we believe, even the approach of being competitive year in, year out uh, is because you don't want to take it for granted. You know, the, these players only have so long to play the game and you want to give them the best chance to compete and, and, and to do that. And our situation certainly is a tricky balance with that. And they get that. But like I said, there's there's some trust that's in play there, too, I think. And, and it's been built up and by some of these guys being on the other side of these deals and being the beneficiaries of it. Eric, because of Charlie's departure and some of the injuries that you've had, in some ways, did that make this a more opportune time in knowing that 2021 was already going to be a transitional year, as you said, in the pitching staff? No. Um, I mean, I, I could pretend to paint it that way. Uh, but no, I, I, look, this is about as tough a time to, to make a move like this as, as I think there is. You know, you're, you're – we, we were just in the World Series and, and, and with a team that has a lot of talent that's on an upward trajectory. And, um, you know, that, that makes a decision like this very challenging. It also sets the, the bar for what we would consider much higher, you know, in, in, in factoring that. So, no, this isn't, this isn't something where th th this move in and of itself is, is, a, is a step back. Um, and certainly when it comes to players, we've we got some guys we're really excited about, like I said, that are, that are close and are gonna impact this team in 2021, but they haven't accomplished what Blake's accomplished. So this is a step back, but by no means is this any sort of white flag on, on this season. We have a lot of confidence in the group that we have here and we've got a lot of time left to continue to build this club out and, and to get this, you know, this, this puzzle um, where we want it. The, the uncertainty of the economics in baseball in 2021, not knowing how long the season is going to be, whether fans are going to come in. 
does that play a role in having to make this move or choosing to make this move? Yeah, minor, I would say. I, I think minor, it truly. Um, you don't, a, a talent like Blake's and, um, you know, and, and, and someone that, that wants to be here and, and loves it here and you have a great relationship with the, I don't, I don't think the, you know, those factors really influence it much um, in, in our minds. It's not nothing, you know, it is, it is a consideration, but um, something that on a player of this, you know, a, of this type of talent that, that isn't going to be the primary driver in a decision here. This franchise has had to make moves like this in the past, just to, as you said, keep one eye on the present and one eye on the future. But does this one feel a little differently just because of where this team just finished up two months ago? Yeah, I, I think, you know, you, you look back at, at, at some of the moves like this that, that we've made, um, and certainly on the pitching side, it, it, it's been a while since one was made on the heels of a, of a season anywhere near this successful. And um, so that, that does make it different. That does make it more difficult um, and led to us having a really high bar to consider it. And I think a, a very specific, you know, type of return that I think we'd be willing to, to consider that this is something that we wouldn't have thought about it if the entirety of the return were years away. Um, to, to have the primary piece for us um, and Luis Patino is the primary piece be as close as he is and to be able to time up where, you know, he, he should be going through a really nice progression over the course of 21. That, that was, that was really important to us, but yeah, without question, the, the balancing of the year that's in front of you and, and the years that are ahead and, and this overwhelming belief that our best chance to win a world series is to continue to run out high quality, you know, strong, you know, playoff caliber clubs year after year. Um, that's most at odds when you're coming off of a year like this and you're most tempted to really put the pedal down and, and push in on, you know, 2021. How close is Patino and, and what is his ceiling? Yeah, uh, with with respect to, to Luis, I, he's he, he's the, the, the big piece for us here and, and that's no knock on the other guys, just a matter of how special that we think he can be um, in terms of in terms of how close he is. You know, it's obviously that you all know the track record um, as, as much as I do. It's limited time above high A. He, he had the experiences at the alternate site and, and had the experiences in the major leagues this year. And, um, you know, and, and to just go out there and, and to let it rip and, and to see what happens. Um, you know, it, it's going to be really important for, for our staff to, to see him firsthand and, and to assess him and can't get to know him and we'll see where he is. Um, but from a talent perspective, you're talking about an incredible athlete. You're talking about someone with top notch aptitude and, and makeup. And, you know, as, as good as those things are, you're talking about a stuff package that is power fastball slider. I feel for a curveball that he didn't lean on much or you didn't really utilize this year at a big league pen and an emerging feel for the changeup that he showed in, um, in 2020. So you got a power package of stuff and you, you have a real feel for strikes underneath with, with all these pitches and, and fully recognize the, the major league um, sample this year didn't necessarily reflect all of that, but, you know, for a, a 21 year old, um, you know, being put in that setting with, with what he had underneath him, very little upper level experience. Um, yeah. We're, we're, we're not going to let that, sway us too much in terms of what we think of his overall outlook here. So um, safe to say we're, we're pretty high on him. I was curious, the, the, the number of uh, pitchers we saw last season who were just the way basically you described Luis is a ball guys and pitching and yeah. pitching well and pitching big innings. Did it change your mind at all to how pitchers develop when they're ready? Uh, you know, when you spend the bullets, uh, you know, the, that you get over the course of a lifetime, um, how, did, how did that change, if, if at all? Yeah, I, I think the, the circumstances of last year, you had a small number of players to consider, you know, for your major league team. And you had a small number of players that if they weren't on your major league team, that you could afford the reps to continue the development while everyone else was back home. And, and so, um, 
that that incentivized, I think, more opportunity for for young talent. And you know, we put Shane McClanahan on our postseason roster without ever having appeared in the game. And so, um, I, I think the, the, as we learn more about pitching, and you know, even some of the technology and the, the some of the tools that are there to evaluate pitching, you you you, you get a you gain a better understanding of you know, how, how this stuff, how the execution, how the command, the strike throwing might translate. You don't know how they're going to handle it emotionally, you know, and, and you can't necessarily replicate the major league environment and all the stresses there. But um, it's, it's something that, yeah, has continued to open our mind and, and, and you look at it and, you know, our, our 40 man roster, we've been hard with injuries here, you know, on the pitching side. And um, when, when a pitcher's synced up and it's going good, it's, it's probably wise to, <laughs> to make sure you, you get it in and you take care of them. You don't overdo it, but that, that you make the most of that when, when they're in those stretches. You call yourself more open-minded then to, than, than you might've been last year on. Yeah, I think so. And I, and I, and, and I think realistically speaking, um, yeah, look, it, it, there were challenges to this past year, but you also learn a lot, you know, it, it, the restrictions forced certain innovations forced certain open-mindedness. And um, we, we learned a lot through that. So I, I think that's fair to say. And I, I think the way our team is now with, with our 40 man, the way it is, you know, Luis Patino, Shane McClanahan, we have some of these arms that are young and, you know, maybe three, four five years ago, we would have shied away from throwing them right in the fire out of the gates this year. I, I think that's something we'll get to camp and, with the group we have, we, we might be a little more open to, to considering these guys. Thanks. Happy New Year. Sure. Thank you, Tim. You too. Hey, Eric, you guys have made these kind of deals many times, obviously, over the years and while you've been here. I know there's some benefit, financial flexibility, the talent pool you just mentioned, what you got in. Is, is it hard to do? Is it frustrating to do that, that you do have to, you know, kind of get to that certain point and trade these guys before they, you know, max out or, or you know, fill out their contract? peak here whatever yeah I, the look we i think we've talked about this some we're, we have an analytical reputation we have a measured reputation in, in, in how we operate but that's not all of who we are and i think as much as we're that i think we're we're people that care about one another and and you know we're we're humane and and and, and we have compassion and um, we uh, believe a lot of our success is because the time that we invest, um, you know, in our players and, and in those relationships and, and in our staff. And um, that certainly on, only makes it more difficult when, when you make decisions like that. Um, but it, yeah, it, it is hard. <laughs> I'm not going to, not going to suggest anything else, but um, you know, I, I, we, we have what we need to win. We've been able to win. And our, our path to doing that, our, our philosophy to doing that is, um, is certainly different from some. I think individuality within how teams operate is not a bad thing for the game um, by, by any means. Um, but no, it's, it's always difficult. You know, I just talked about Blake. I have distinct memories. We were talking a couple nights ago about him walking out in Port Charlotte, you know, <laughs> just after he signed. And it feels like yesterday, you know, and all the effort, all the energy that's, that's, that's gone into helping Blake get to where he is. And he deserves the most credit. But, you know, all that, just like that, you know, he's a Padre. And um, that, that, does, that does hit you. Um, and just just because of the relationships and all that that we put in to to try to help our players succeed on and off the field. But I also believe that we're doing the right thing to to give ourselves the best chance to win a World Series. It, right, that's what I meant. Just kind of from an organizational standpoint of having to cycle through, you know, and, and that's obviously been some of the uh, reaction to this deal. Is here the Rays go again? You know, trade another guy, trade another guy. I'm just curious how that kind of wears on you if it does. Yeah. Um, just try to find the right perspective. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's hard for the reasons that I, that, that I just mentioned. And, and because, like I said, I, if, if I'm fortunate, I have, you know, I, I can stay in this game and this, you know, on a roll, maybe not this one. Um, you're going to need a few of these deals to work out the, to hold that out. But I have more time here in some capacity players don't. And, you know, the, the opportunity to play together, to grow together, you know, continuity is, is so important. And, um, 
it's not that we don't believe in those things. I just think that this is what we need to do to continue to be competitive year in, year out. And, and by doing that gives us the best chance to win a world series over time. But um, yeah, it's like I said, like there's a lot going on in the world right now. Um, finding the right perspective helps to, to make these things a little bit easier to, to handle and to stomach. What, um, just maybe a little quickly, but what, what do you foresee for Mejia and then the two younger guys in the deal? Where do you see them slotting in initially? Yeah, with, with Mejia, um, he's, he's 25, came with a lot of fanfare uh, and, and certainly a lot of pedigree through, through Cleveland system. You know, now from San Diego to, to here, uh, someone that um, liked the offensive skill set and certainly for, for the position, the offensive standards at the catching position, we like it quite a bit. Uh, there's there's parts of his game behind the plate that that he's going to need to continue to develop, and um, that that's something that fully expect us to to take head on. Um, we have some thoughts here. We spent a lot of time um, learning him, and and as much as you can from a distance, um, and and have a lot of confidence that you know Paul Hoover, Q Cash. We got a lot of catchers on our you know on our major league staff um, can can really help him and. Um, a contrast and skill set with, with Zanino and I think the carriers and the draws there, but um, to, to have a young catcher that, that could come in, you know, a fresh start, so to speak, with all the experiences, life experiences that he's had underneath him to this point and, and physically still in a really good place. Um, we just, we like those guys. We like to give them that opportunity and hope that, you know, it's the right time, the right place for them to take off and really establish themselves. Uh, and then, uh, Cole Wilcox was an arm that we liked quite a bit in the draft, thought that, you know, as a draft eligible sophomore, thought that there was a chance that with a normal spring that he's somebody with, with the power that, that he has to his game could have really elevated up draft boards, you know, if the opportunity was there. Um, it did help that he had some sort of college season, you know, and then had some work through the summer and the fall. Um, so, you know, plenty of time there going to do, them, you know, take care of them, um, really put them through the kind of the, the the foundational process that we have with our pitching development and just see where that where that takes them um and then blake hunt someone that we we had some interest in a year ago you know and had tracked them for a while as a high school draft and, and and frankly someone that each passing time we saw him looked like he was continuing to get better someone that's made right um that the work ethic is is what you want and and he's built to, to play that position and to continue to develop while, while carrying the gear back there and um you know we did we did have a chance to see him uh, and, and get looks at him in, in 2020 and uh, Jason Cole, one of our scouts that, that did spend time in San Diego's camp and, and was able to see him, um, felt really, really strongly about the development and, and what he did to, to further establish himself uh, this coming year. So didn't come with the benefit of of games, you know, that, that counted, you know, necessarily, but the chance to see him, to see where his body is, to see where he is physically, uh, to see where his tools are, um, came away with a lot of excitement about him. And uh, he was a pretty important part of this. So he's, he's someone, we'll get him in, like I said, you know, with all these guys, you want to be careful with the expectations and the plans you put in place for him without seeing him, given how disruptive this past year was. But, um, you know, he, he's, we'll slot him in on one of these full season clubs in this new um, affiliate structure. And, um, you know, it's going to take him a little bit of time, but really, really like where he's at and excited about his chances to be an everyday catcher soon enough. Hey, Eric, just kind of two quick things for me. Um, for Mejia, is he a, a strictly a catcher? Do you see him playing the outfield at all? And then what kind of went into the uh, the Alvarado trade there? Yeah, um, on on Mejia, yeah, you know, we, we want to do everything we can to to allow him to catch. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's I think that's important. I think that's going to be his best path in our minds. Um, and and we'll see. Uh, you know, he comes with, he has a reputation that has some question marks on it and understand that. But for us, for him to, to be, you know, the, the best contributor he can be to a winning club, um, it's going to come with the need for him to catch and, and for him to take a step forward there. So that's, that's our full intention to, to run out uh, with him specifically. And then uh, shifting to the, the Alvarado trade, we, we've had some discussions um, on some potential deals Um and, and, and this is one that came together. We needed a spot with this, the San Diego trade here. Uh, and, and Paulson, the first baseman that we're getting back from, from Los Angeles. 
is uh, somebody that, that fits in pretty clean within our system and, and should have a nice lane to, to develop and to grow his skills out. So um, a little bit of 40 man management uh, and the opportunity to get back a player that slots in well to our system. And, you know, we had Jake Gunther involved in the deal with Texas and uh, Paulson, somebody that can kind of come in and, and slot into that opportunity that was there and, and should have a nice lane for him to continue to develop within our group. And just to go back to Alvarado for a second, you think the injuries were the issue? Obviously, there was some inconsistency with strike throwing there, but it seems like coming out of 2018, he looked like he was really going to be something, right? Yeah, yeah, um, without question. And look, at his, his age, um, there's plenty of time left. And I think we, we saw some real signs of, of continued uh, development emotionally, mentally, um, this past year, you know, the way he handled being on and off our postseason rosters, um, the work he put in after he was injured to to really get after it physically um, was was encouraging. I, I think, you know, you look back to, to 2019 um, and got off to a really promising start and then went a little sideways. And, you know, uh, he he's, he's from Venezuela. You know, he had the time back home. He had the concerns and the stresses with his family, you know, and um, they're here now, uh, you know, and, and, and then being around being in the States is big, you know, for him, I think it's really helped him. And, um, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me in the least that the stuff is going to continue to show up and it's harnessed and, and he gets back to the zone a little bit more and, and, and cuts through adversity a little bit better and does a nice job for Philadelphia. Anything else for Eric? All right, Eric, thanks for joining us.